subscribe. I only do this for you. And turn on your notifications. Let's go. God is coming down from heaven. He told Moses, it will be the Lord's Passover. For I will pass through the land of Egypt. And every firstborn of the house of Egypt will die. But you guys take blood and put it upon your door. When I see the blood, I will pass over. You're not understanding this. God is telling them to do a ritual so that he doesn't kill them. God is telling them, do a ritual. If God knows that these are my people, yeah. and he's saying, I'm coming to destroy the house of Egypt, but tell everybody to put blood on their door so that when I come, I will pass over them. Meaning God is operating like, not God is not human people. God is a spirit. He's telling them to do a ritual that will make him not destroy them, the, the firstborn of the house, and he will pass over. And you are thinking this thing is a joke. Why didn't God just come? The Bible says he knows you by name. The Bible says he knows you by name. But when he's coming to you, unless you comply to the principles of what he has told you to put in place, you can die with everyone else. I think people forget that God, you know, you some of you think God is your grandfather. That you can just climb on or your dad or your husband or your wife or your child that you can just. These are rituals. Why is God telling Moses, build an ark like this? In it, you're going to put the manna, you're going to put the stuff, you're going to put the Ten Commandments. And on the western part of the ark, Every time you sacrifice an animal, you will sprinkle blood on that side. These are rituals, people. These are rituals. These are... The, wow. Prophet, am I not saying the truth? These are rituals. This is so but you think only the people who do rituals is... Uh, you don't understand they stole it from you. Who started altars? There's altars in heaven. There are altars in heaven. The Bible tells you in the book of Isaiah, Isaiah is in heaven. And, and he is afraid because his lips is corrupt. And a seraphim goes onto the altar of God and takes a coal and comes and touches his lips. He says, you see, this has been taken from the altar. It has touched your lips. Your lips have been purified. So altars are not an earthly thing. Incense is not even an earthly thing. There is incense in heaven. John 6, 54 to 58. Yes. Whoso eateth my flesh yes. and drinketh my blood hath eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Verse 55. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. Verse 56. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood yes. dwelleth in me, and I in him. Yes. 57. As the living Father hath sent me, and I live by the Father, so he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. Uh -huh. 58. Uh -huh. This is that bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers did eat manna, and are dead. He that eateth of this bread shall live forever. Do you understand how highly spiritual what Jesus is saying? This is, this is too spiritual. You know, the problem is when you, you are reading about the Lord Jesus, you are thinking of God and godliness, which is true. This principle people in the kingdom of darkness stole and they used. They take young children's blood. They eat the cannibalism. They do that to, to maintain power, to take the, the, the youth from the... They do these things. But Jesus is come from heaven. He's saying, okay... I have come down so that you can drink and eat my flesh so that you can now enter into me. You can have life. But you know, people don't understand when you say, Lord Jesus, I give you my life. The day that you sit down to do the Lord's table, you are doing a ritual. These are spiritual rituals. You just don't think about it like that because you are thinking of godliness. It has, you have been desensitized to what it really is. Imagine if I called you in a dark room I'm wearing a hoodie and I have a cup. And I'm saying, this cup. 
is my blood. Drink. You say, ah, devil worship. Wow. Jesus is doing the same thing. There are rituals. You are serving a God that is a spirit. But you don't understand that in order to engage with the spirit, there are certain rituals that you have to follow. They took that same knowledge and perverted the wisdom and used it the other way. Uh, you know what, my spirit, uh, I'm, I'm trying to explain to you something. Because you people don't understand that, listen, to be a Christian is to be spiritual. It's not reading verses without not understanding what you're saying or what is going. It is spiritual. The Lord Jesus says, the words that I'm speaking to you, they are spirit and they are life. Yes. This is spiritual. Yes. This is spiritual. For we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. Spiritual. You're fighting spiritual battles. Unless you're spiritual, you cannot overcome. You will not do anything. You will lose. You will lose. You will lose. You will lose. Don't you think, don't you know, pouring oil on people is a ritual. When you take anointing oil and you anoint yourself, you are just desensitized, but it is a ritual. This, this oil represents the power of God. As I put it upon my head and it pours on me, it's like the power of God flowing on me. You are doing rituals, but you are desensitized in the sense that you don't have that same reverence and fear of God to say that this is a highly spiritual thing I'm doing. You just take oil like you take lotion. You can't tell the difference because your spirit, your spirit is not in tune and is not in touch with spiritual things. The children of Israel are in, a, in God is, a, is sending the angel of death into Egypt. God is about to kill the Egyptians and everybody that is in the land of Egypt. But for his people, why didn't God now look at this prophet? Let me just say this. And I think I may have to do another part for this because I, I, I am feeling the presence of God. But at the same time, I, I, I feel like God wants to tell people to understand how serious it is to work with Him. Look at this. Subscribe. I only do this for you. And turn on your notifications. Let's go.